Welcome back. I'm playing Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector, and we're continuing on with our multiplayer tips section. And now that I've gone through all the orc units, I figured it would also be helpful to show off their command abilities and how the momentum works. So for the orcs here, their faction trait is armed to the teeth. And this unit gains one momentum bonus for melee kills and three bonus momentum for range kills. And then what the momentum does per point of moment or per point of momentum you get, you get these bonuses. So you get uh, for each one point you get uh, a little less than a percentage of range stability. You get uh, uh, 0 0.02 of armor piercing per momentum, and you get a 0 0.2 critical. Uh, hit chance per momentum. So as you can imagine you're getting a hundred that would give you a 20% critical hit chance two armor piercing and uh, 7.5 range stability so the more momentum you get the more you're going to be hitting and the harder it's going to be now unfortunately for melee that means they kind of miss out a little bit because uh, they're not getting the range stability but getting that increased armor piercing and critical hit chance allows you to get things to go just completely bonkers once you're doing that especially when you're stacking all their other bonuses here so I'll show off uh, the command point abilities here and we'll get to see what it's all about. Okay, so before I get going on these command points, if you're enjoying these videos, please give my channel a like and subscribe, encourage me to post more content for you. So now going on this, looking through our command points, we have three different abilities just like every faction. Uh, the very first command point is um, Mordaka. So the HQ commander channels the will of Gork and Mork to extort allies with within five tiles to lay down more fire plus 25 shots expires in one turn. So as you can see here it's a significant uh, square here so you can almost cover most of your screen and it lasts for one turn so you just right click and then all these guys would have plus 25 percent shots the way you could really maximize this the most is then you could use their flashy crump and with the flash gets here because that'll give you an additional uh attack for every uh movement point that they spend so that would give you even more shots and then you could also end up using might is right which gives you an additional armor piercing plus an additional 50% shots. If I had Death Dreads on here, each Death Dread that's by there, I think they get plus 10% shots. So if you had three of them together, you could get 30 plus shots plus an additional 25. So that would be 55 additional shots. So if you had the Flamer variant, that would effectively be able to kill even heavy um, units. Uh, heavy units for infantry, I should say. You wouldn't really want to do it for... Um, vehicles and uh, it just allows you to do a bunch of damage so you would effectively want to use that at the start of your turn in order to make sure you got all the attacks there so you wouldn't want to be using guys that you'd be shooting with range and then end up putting it because then you'll be wasting your time uh, the second tier two or I say the tier two ability is the big sh shoot a strafe and it will do friendly fire but it fires 45 times per tile for four tiles in the line, dealing six to nine damage per shot with an accuracy of 80 and an armor piercing of three. So this actually allows you to do pretty significant damage and it will even do decent damage against things like the Tau. So you could end up doing a strafing run here and end up taking those guys out like this. And then the ultimate tier three um, ability, which I'll show you in just a second. All right, so just reloading this to get those command points back. So that uh, big shoot a strafe, you know, you could either start an attack off with that, um, especially with, say, the Necrons, because you'll weaken the forces, and if you kill models, it'll cause them to have their resurrection, then you can finish them off. Um, that's how I usually use it, uh, because if you can close the distance with your melee guys, then that'll allow you to get a bunch of kills uh, pretty easily, and I'd much rather have the momentum gains on my knobs so they can keep moving forward and doing more damage and then their ultimate ability is the boom bomb so it will deal friendly damage it applies 52 to 70 damage to targets in the surrounding tiles but it does 135 to 180 damage to the center so if we end up doing this here I guess the uh, Praetorians here are the strongest unit that's alive so we'll come here 
that drop the bomb on them. And then it's got decent armor piercing, so it even does damage uh, to guys that have decent armor. So it allows you to do very significant amounts of damage. And again, that is like the ultimate ability, especially if you are playing like the Tau, who have all their guys uh, grouped together, then you can end up... Uh, just dropping the bomb in the center there and it'll kill whatever unit you have selected in the middle. It would almost one shot crisis suits. Uh, it should almost one shot uh, stealth suits as well. And then it would do 50 to 70 to everybody around there within the splash damage. Now, unfortunately, it requires, you know, three command points, which can be quite tricky uh, to obtain. So you're kind of using this at the very end. So you got to keep it as like your ace in your pocket. So if you're, because you're, say, I'm using the Tau as an example because that's who the orcs tend to really suffer uh, the matches against. I mean, they're pretty viable against most other people. I mean, the Necrons can be pretty challenging too, especially if they do Living Lightning and you go with a, a mostly infantry build. That can be a disaster as well. But uh, by doing that tier 3 ability, you can drop in the middle, just wipe everybody out, and then finish them off with your ranged attacks. So definitely lots of ways of uh, using these abilities. Pretty much the uh, some players, if you're doing like a big infantry build that are all ranged units, then some people just spam the Mordaka ability, which can definitely be good. Um, the big strafe... Uh, is also a good ability as well for the reasons discussed but sometimes if you have all these other guys especially if their abilities are up it would make much more sense to use the plus 25 shots and if you could end up uh, timing it appropriately and now this would be more luck most likely uh, with the momentum that you get additional gains with uh, then you end up uh, using the uh, surge ability and then you'll have the critical hit chances and then you'll have the plus 25 shots twice or if you've used one of those other abilities that we discussed you can do that plus this and that's how you can get just astronomical amounts of uh, damage here. I rarely find that I get up to the boom bomb because I tend to want to use one of these other abilities prior to this because by the time I'm getting to a three command point ability the the match is almost over and we are like uh, two exhausted people in a slug match here and I just need to get some things going here. So I tend to find one of these two other abilities to be more beneficial to get it going to start with. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to use the orcs. Just remember that your momentum gains are most beneficial to your ranged units, but getting the momentum up on your melee will help you with getting their critical hit chances up and their armor piercing, so it's not like it's uh, wasted on melee units, but you'll get all three of your character trait or your faction traits if you're using it on ranged units. So, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please give my channel a like and subscribe to encourage me to post more content for you. Have a great day.